Mayor of Santa Monica, Kevin McKeown, to the stage. Well, thank you, Julia. Good morning. Uh, that's not something you often get to hear me say, is it? I mean, usually on Tuesday, you see me about midnight chairing another late night city council meeting. It's, it's true that I am a night owl. Uh, so today, what I've done is I set my personal watch ahead 12 hours, and it, it's going to be OK. So good morning, Santa Monica. I'm glad to join you this morning to talk about game changers in a room full of people who have been game changers, who've helped make Santa Monica thrive. You may not know that I, too, was once a local captain of industry. When I first moved to Santa Monica many years ago, I was the general manager of KROQ, K-Rock Radio, and I looked like this. <clears throat> Now, obviously, I've cleaned up a bit in the intervening years, and I'm now here as your mayor. Yeah, that shave and a haircut was a game changer. <laughs> well, Santa Monica has changed since the 70s, too, which many have embraced as exciting, but others resisted with consternation. Change is inevitable, and today we, we know that we can learn from early identification of game changers. At this midpoint of the second decade of the 21st century, Santa Monica is well positioned to thrive as a relatively small but trend-setting world-class beach city. This morning's event is centered on game changers, and we have quite a few in our midst in Santa Monica in 2015. Let me touch on six game-changing trends that are shaping Santa Monica and which require our attention and thoughtful policy making. The context is the rapid evolution of Santa Monica's local economy. According to city staff estimates, our local businesses generate 65% of the general fund budget through payment of taxes and fees. Those revenues allow Santa Monica to provide exceptionally high levels of traditional municipal services such as police, fire, library, public works, parks, and recreation services, but also to go much further into realms that other cities can only discuss and debate. These include our council priorities in sustainability, technology, affordable housing, support for schools, human services, mobility, art and culture, and now well-being. Local business is critical to safety, quality of life, and sustainability. We must not take it for granted, and we must be aware that local business is changing. So here, therefore, is game changer number one, exploding growth in technology. Although it's still a subset of our local economy, the tech sector is an increasingly important one. Santa Monica was the birthplace of Silicon Beach. Tech now employs 22,000 people, or one quarter of the Santa Monica workplace, in 2,400 companies, payrolls of $3 billion in technology and technology-related businesses here in Santa Monica. Innovation crackles in our city, especially driven by 18 co-work spaces and startup accelerators. Multiple technology summits and hackathons draw some of the biggest names in technology to Santa Monica to share ideas every year. The city, in turn, offers the fastest publicly owned fiber network in the nation with 100 gigabit broadband speeds to nurture Santa Monica-based businesses that require lightning fast access to the internet. And by the way, almost 20 years ago before the council, I was on the city task force that wrote the plan to put that fiber in the ground. So, Yes, at that time, back in the day, that was a game changer. We're currently expanding free hi-fi hotspots throughout the most frequented parts of town and providing open access to a variety of government-generated data. Coming soon, we'll experiment with the delivery of high-speed city net services to residents who increasingly work at home. Now, make no mistake, technology can also be disruptive ex of existing businesses. Ask our independent bookstores or our record shops, if you can still find one. Airbnb challenges our hospitality industry, and Uber and Lyft threaten traditional cab companies and cab drivers. As usual, capitalism works best with democratically decided controls, and we at City Hall are going to need your help in deciding how best to adapt to the so-called sharing economy. This combined private-public commitment to continue its technological innovation is going to keep Santa Monica at the tech forefront for years to come. That is game changer number one. The rise of millennials is the second game-changing trend worthy of note. 
Millennials represent some 80 million Americans born between 1982 and 2001, which coincidentally is roughly the same size as our boomer generation. Many are young professionals that Richard Florida calls the creative class, and they are flocking to Santa Monica. Part of what attracts them is our walkability, good schools, parks, active downtown, and multiple transportation options. Michael Myers, a managing director of the Rockefeller Foundation, says, as we move from a car-centric model of mobility to a nation that embraces more equitable and sustainable transportation options, millennials are leading the way. Indeed, in a recent survey by Transportation for America, up to 86% of millennials said it was important for their city to offer opportunities to live and work without relying on a car. And that's where Santa Monica is really stepping up with the start of Expo Rail services, perhaps by the end of this year, with heightened big blue bus service integrated with that rail, with 45 new miles of bike facilities installed since 2011, with bike sharing in 2015 and car sharing coming in 2016, and with assertive efforts to make walking, just plain safe walking, easier in town. In short order, Santa Monica is becoming a 21st century multimodal city, and that is game changer number two. The third game changing trend is all about water. And this, by the way, is Santa Monica tap water. Very, very good. According to Time Magazine, 1.2 billion people, or a sixth of the world's population, live in areas affected by water scarcity, and that number could grow to 1.8 billion by 2025. Over the past century, the worldwide rate of water withdrawal from existing surface and underground sources increased at twice the rate of population growth. However, in the United States, water use has decreased, even as the population has grown, and that is due to efficiency, and that's the key. The drought is real, and it's here for the long run. It would take 11 trillion gallons of water for California to recover fully from this drought. But Santa Monica will chart its own path to water sustainability and self-sufficiency. The council-approved Sustainable Water Master Plan is the first of its kind in California. It puts Santa Monica on a course to wean ourselves off of Colorado River and Sacramento Delta water by 2020 through a combination of prudent use of groundwater, increased use of recycled water, and conservation. We can achieve our water goals without having to sacrifice our living standards or the beauty of Santa Monica. The city's water conservation campaign engages our entire community. Not only will we do proactive outreach to the largest water users, we'll provide practical and easy ways for everyone to save water. It's the norm in Santa Monica to use water well, and we aim to reduce overall water consumption 20% by 2016. We can be truly independent and not reliant on earthquake vulnerable aqueducts. That will be game changer number three. The fourth game changer is the rising cost of land here in Santa Monica. While well, it's a testament of how desirable our community is as a place to live, work, go to school, shop, and recreate, we risk losing some of the essence of what makes Santa Monica so remarkable, mainly our socioeconomic diversity. Santa Monica must not become a haven exclusively for the ultra-rich. It has to do its part in providing reasonably priced housing in a region where it's an extremely short supply. The loss of redevelopment in 2012 stripped our city of its primary funding source to partner with community-based nonprofits to create new affordable housing. Measure H on last November's ballot was to replace a portion of that lost revenue, but it didn't pass. We need to recommit ourselves to the voter-approved goal that's in our city charter that 30% of the housing built in town be truly affordable and to securing a dedicated funding source or sources to achieve that outcome. The city, the council, and the community will determine just how to do that over the next two years. We can't afford to lose our dwindling supply of existing affordable housing. Future growth can't be allowed to displace our existing residents. If anyone plans a project that will evict my neighbors, I must stand with my neighbors. Eviction for development is not the only threat to renters in Santa Monica. We've seen an uptick in the incidence of tenant harassment in town, which many attribute to the economic pressure of those rising land prices and rising rents. The city councils reviewed the administration and enforcement of our city's tenant harassment ordinance and directed future action to educate the public, improve investigation of possible violations, and increase compliance with the law. We hope to depolarize situations work with parties to explain the law 
and resolve disputes amicably wherever we can. Still, this trend is going to challenge our community on many levels for years to come. Achieving housing affordability and housing stability will be game changer number four. Now, our fifth game changer comes from within our own community, the rise of residents. <laughs> residents of our city are newly insistent on being fairly acknowledged as major stakeholders in the future of our community. In this last year, we saw the first local attempt at a land use referendum in decades, with over 13,000 signatures gathered to stop the proposed Heinz project. I know that residents worry about the quality of life in their neighborhoods and the ability to maintain personal mobility so they can work, shop, and take their children to school. In addressing this game changer, the rise of residents, we're going to have to become more sensitive to traffic and parking. Our city policy of no net new trips has to be taken seriously. Likewise, we'll have to more carefully plan for how employee and customer parking spill into already crowded residential streets. We must respect residents and find ways to manage how commercial activities intrude into established neighborhoods. Last fall, we experienced a particularly fractious and divisive local election. I, I come to you this morning fresh from the electoral battlefield, and uh, I can tell you people are angry. Residents of this wonderful and livable city of Santa Monica are concerned that the community they love is being lost. This has encouraged increasingly non-factual rhetoric. As you may have seen in my recent Santa Monica Daily Press op-ed, I'm committed to getting us back to facts and working toward solutions. Our land use and circulation element outcomes, well, thank you. Our land use and circulation element outlines how future commercial and housing needs can be accommodated in Santa Monica, downtown, at Bergamot, at Memorial Park, along transit lines, etc. Making good on our promises to residents to protect our neighborhoods and finding new ways to connect with the public, uh, nurture positive civic engagement, uh, encourage community involvement, those will be game changer number five. So I promised you half a dozen game changers this morning, and the last of our game changers is a completed updated zoning code for the city of Santa Monica based on that land use and circulation element adopted almost five years ago. I truly hope and expect the completion of our long-range planning efforts will provide needed reassurance to many in our community who fear that development threatens many aspects of what we hold dear in Santa Monica. In 2015, I expect that the City Council will adopt a new zoning ordinance and perhaps the downtown specific plan as well. Concurrently, staff is drafting the Memorial Park Neighborhood Plan, a pedestrian action plan, and the Lincoln Neighborhood Corridor Plan. When all those are fully debated, deliberated, and adopted by 2016, it will have been a 12-year march to update all of our major land use plans in Santa Monica. But at that point, the rules, the limitations, and the requirements will all be explicit. Neighborhood conservation will be paramount. Slow, sustainable, and smart growth will be allowable only in transportation-rich areas in less than 4% of the city, and only the best discretionary projects will be approved. Perhaps then we can find greater unity in spirit and policy here in Santa Monica. Those are things that have been strained, I know, in, in recent years. Oh, and there's just one more thing. Um, there's another game changer. I remind us with regret of the pending retirement of our next speaker this morning, City Manager Rod Gould. And to introduce that game changer is Tom Neary from Skanska. <laughs> 